Hi, this is George Morell, and you're watching DJSound.com. I've been in the scene of the house music scene for years, since the very, very beginning. Been in and out as far as production. Um, back from the Strictly Rhythm days, did a lot of A&R for Strictly Rhythm. Did a lot of productions, um, that in which came out was released in Strictly as Morell's Groups Part 4, C.C. Rogers, worked with Eric Morello, to DJ Pierre, a lot of guys. And ever since I started traveling DJ around the world, I kind of took off from production for a bit. So now that um, my mojo is back into production, since I'm trying to make more time into being in the studio and writing, I'm back in full force. Let's Groove was actually quite interesting when it was made. I was on my way out the door. Um, I don't know where I was going. and. The baseline came into my head. Uh, I had about maybe 20 minutes to put it down and and, and get to my meeting. So I just said, let me put the baseline down now before I forget it. Did the baseline. I said, put the baseline down. Everything else started coming in. The octave higher came into my head. So I just pretty much did the arrangement. All total time, it took 30 minutes. After that, I didn't have anything to save it on. So I said, look, if I turn off the computer, I'm not going to remember all these parts. So let me just put on a, on a, I didn't have a floppy disk during that time, I was using Atari. Let me just save it on a DAT. Fair enough, sat there for a while. When I was compiling um, Morel's Groove Part 4, I felt like it was empty and it was missing a track. So I decided to put Let's Groove as the B um, track, second track on the B side. I felt like it was not finished. Next thing you know, it became Let's Groove and it is what is, you know, it is what it is now. So you never know when, um, music what is going to be the one and what is not going to be the one because for me the ones that i work the most happens to to don't i don't happen to be as suspected as the ones that i work I, I spend less time on and perfect example let's prove everything started pretty much with um cutting records uh what happened was um aldo marine had a store near my school and every day after school i would save my lunch money to go buy a piece of vinyl. After a while, I um, I realized Cutting Records came out with, with the first release, and since Aldo was a friend of mine, I asked Aldo, hey, how did you do this B? He's like, oh, we got a Roland 808. I said, oh, well, I had no idea what was a Roland 808 or what was even a drum machine. But I was very curious about it. Um, next thing you know, I got started getting names of equipment and I saved more lunch money. And bought myself a little drum machine. I think it was a TR 606 or 626 by Roland at the time. Couldn't afford the 808. And um, and I just started making noise. I call it noise because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know the difference between a black key and a white key on a piano. I just knew this side was high and that way it was slow, lower. Uh, I came up with a record called As a Groove, in which then turned into Wiggle It and became a monster hit. And I was like, oh, this was pretty easy to make. Um, and I was approached, I was DJing in New York quite often and David Cole was a very good friend of mine. David um, used to approach me and play, let me play some of his stuff on, on the parties to test. I told David one, one time, I said, you're going to be really big one day. He's like, no, nah, no. Nah. I was like, no, seriously, David, your stuff sounds really good. So he started helping me more in the musical, learn more about music and beats and so on. So it was great influence in my life, thanks to him. And next thing you know, CNC came on. Came on. CNC became CNC, and he asked me to come along and start working with CNC to do some edits. Did the edits um, for Lisa Lee, Samara Carey, did a bunch of stuff for them. We were factory. Shortly after that, I was coming up with these tracks that were not, let's say, more commercial, that were more underground. And that's when I didn't know what to do with them because I would just create them, but then I didn't know what to, where, what, where to put them, how to release them. I noticed Strictly Rhythm came out with a record which was fairly on the ground and then I approached Strictly and I said, hey, do you guys want to put this out? And they 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 liked it. It was called Roommates, Twin um, Roommates or something, I don't recall. And it did fairly well for them. Um, that came out. Then I had a, did another one called Special, um, Sir James. I'm sure you guys know that one too. Once that came out, did what it did, then Strictly Rhythm approached me to like, to come over with a &R for the label and Strictly Rhythm became history. After realizing that I needed to release more stuff on Groove on, I'm also spending so many times 
so many hours <laughs> in the airplane. I have come to conclusion that there's no reason why I shouldn't be coming out with Morel's Grooves again. So now that it's going to be the old releases, it's just new George Morel releases and Groove on on Groove on and other labels with the identity of Morel's Grooves. Recordbox has opened another world for me. Um, I've been I went for the transition from vinyl to CDs. Um, how is pretty much doing my stuff is I will categorize my CDs into different genders, tech house or whatever style I'm playing or, or, or just whatever style I was going to go with with the night according to how the crowd reaction would turn out to be and um, one of my biggest problems was that I didn't categorize my names on CDs so I was always having, always having a problem trying to remember okay, which CDs this track is on which which mark that I do on this CD and, and things will get lost throughout the, throughout the, at the end of the night my CDs will be all over the place and everything my whole library was just out of whack so I'll set it up again for the next gig having record box made a huge difference because now everything is clear even if I play a record during my set and I don't and I want to play it later on I find it easily in record box because it keeps a history or I can index it and Instead of having my, instead of having 20 different CDs or whatever the amount of CDs I have, it's all all now on the stick, on all, on um, how you call those? I forgot the, SD the SD car. There you go, the SD car. It's light, very user friendly, and it's it's the best thing I, re I recommend it to everyone. Pretty much, that's that's just the bottom line. <laughs> I've been playing CDs for about, I would say, three years now. About three years, could have been, could be four. I missed the, for a while there, I missed the vinyl because the vinyl had the covers and I knew what this record, um, the artwork would make a big difference on, on when I was playing vinyl compared to CDs. CDs, the artwork sometimes was not included on the MP3 or the Wave, or the artwork just, it was just by names and it's hard to remember since there's so many releases out now to remember all the all the titles all the producers all the group name i just don't have enough mentally memory hard drive for for space for to remember that um again using record box makes a huge difference because the artwork is there um the categorization categorization is that the right word it's um it's a lot easier to find and i can manipulate into different folders for different genders if i want to play chill out if i want to play tech house if i want to just be whatever i want to have it's just right there it's like a perfect library uh with with everything as always it's just gotta have a groove <laughs> if it has a groove it will be on groove on <laughs>